Alrighty, so given that I'm a masochist, I'm just going to keep <laughs> making more of these tonight. Uh, this one's also decently long, but I'll see if I can get through it. So, the worker, second physics. Um, let's start with the appearance of a worker. In childhood, a child with physics 2 uh, hardly stands out externally from his peers. The only fairly solid sign of a hard worker uh, during this period was a round, moon-like face. <laughs> God knows how it happened and what science will say about this. <clears throat> but the second physics is predominantly uh, brachycephalic, short-headed, while the rest of the physics are predominantly doly, doly, dolicocephalic. I forgot how to say that one. Long-headed. Uh, so by its round, wide face, second physics is recognizable from afar and at any age. Well, um, overall, this is pure bullshit because your head shape is predominantly determined by your genetics and your ancestry. You know, certain, certain ethnicities um, and sub-ethnicities have, you know, a more brachycephalic or delicocephalic delicocephalic, you know, and I, I just don't know what to make of that. Um, but anyway. Okay. The onset of puberty adds little to the appearance of a hard worker. Girls grow small, strong, milk-rich breasts. Ooh, yummy. Uh, the buttocks increase greatly in volume. Uh, nice. One gets the impression that with the onset of puberty, the process of growth and distribution of the pelvic muscle mass of the first and second physicists proceeds one-sidedly and in different directions. In the first physics, hips grow with flat buttocks. In the second physics, while maintaining the narrowness of the hips, the buttocks grow. Um, well, I mean, I'm all for that, so... It's good so far. Uh, before women give birth, uh, men up to 30 years of age usually remain thin and slim. All the more striking is the metamorphosis that occurs with the second physics after that. The waist disappears, and the resulting straight line from the hips to the shoulders gives the short, as it turns out, torso an almost square shape. The ankles disappears, and the foot seems to stand more firmly on the ground. The hand is made short-fingered, representing a combination of a wide square palm with short pump quick fingers. Okay. Uh, the circle is the shape that dominates the appearance of the second physics, and it was the shape of the circle that Tolstoy used when describing Plat Plat Platon Karatayev. Uh, not even sure. Okay, but in any case... Uh, He's calling it Plato now, but Plato's whole figure was round. His head was completely round, his back, chest, shoulders, even the arms that he wore, as if always going to hug something, were round. A pleasant smile and large, brown, gentle eyes were round. Okay, so there's something about second physics where, you know, okay, let's, let's review here. He's basically saying they're round-faced, round-bodied, they're short, uh, and they're nimble. And, and quick. So that's he's trying to paint a picture of the nature of second physics through what their body would I look like in the ideal. Um, let's see. Okay, after 30 years, the hard worker somehow shortens, or perhaps begins to look shorter, his neck and legs. Uh, his entire silhouette seems to shrink and become denser, giving his appearance a strong, healthy, down-to-earth, and compact appearance. It is not for nothing that Kretschmer, in his classification, called the second physics a, a picnic, a uh, dense. Uh, not sure about that, um, about the translation there, but dense, okay. Um, the evolution of the appearance of the second physics can be clearly seen in the evolution of Napoleon's appearance. In his youth, he even openly flaunted his slimness and thinness. What ultimately came of it can be seen in the portraits of Napoleon from the imperial era. You can imagine what the female version of the second physics looks like after giving birth. Looking at the nude images of Rubin's second wife, uh, Helena Fraumann, 
Um, and then he gives it other examples. Venus uh, Callipagase Pomona by Milo. Not familiar with those. Um, in general, the appearance of the second physics can be described as follows. Her face is neither too ugly, too ugly nor too beautiful. Too beautiful. Um, interesting. Uh, a simple, wide, uh, round face with small, short, usually straight nose. Height is often below average. Tall people are rare. Hair is not particularly textured and thick. And men experience early baldness. Uh, the figure is broad-shouldered, broad-chested, and has a set back. The proportions are dominated by an orientation towards breadth, squareness, composure, and stability. Therefore, if we proceed from the established canons of beauty, the origin of which was discussed in the section devoted to first physics, the proportions of a worker cannot be called beautiful, although this circumstance does not bother men at all and worries women with second physics a little, um, meaning it doesn't bother them much. So... That's interesting. So they're not like voluptuous, like first physics. They're not like juicy. They're more like, uh, he's kind of, remember, he's calling them worker. So he's kind of painting this picture of them being uh, functional. You know, they're like very compact, functional people. Um, and that, again, or the second position is normative. So he's making this analogy there. Uh, I will add that in the form described above, the second physics after 30 years is, as it were, preserved and survives unchanged until death. A small belly may still grow, but serious to the point of flabbiness, obesity does not occur. The worker does not like to carry excess weight, and the, dy and the dynamic lifestyle that he usually leads does not contribute to this. Although, as was said, the appearance of the second physics is never too beautiful, a reservation is necessary. It may not be very attractive in statics, but it is unusually good in dynamics. So in other words, um, resting, the second physics is not, not, not too beautiful just in, a, in terms of its like resting nature, right? Like the first physics is a resting beauty. The second physics, however, is beautiful in its motion, okay, in the way it moves. Uh, the impeccable cleanliness, economy, speed, and precision of movements, characteristics of the worker, are aesthetic in themselves. I can't help but remember my karate teacher in this regard. Looking at his short legs, it was hard to believe that they were even capable of rising above his rather noticeable belly. Therefore, something like a shock was caused during the, his training, as if shot by rapid, slow, impeccable impurity, not inferior in complexity, height and beauty to ballet swings. So in other words, his... His, you know, stout uh, karate teacher moved, you know, almost like a ballet dancer, right? Age has little effect on the plasticity of a worker. Gorky, describing the aged Mark Twain, said, His dry folding bo bones moved caref move carefully. Each of them feels his old age. He seems very old, but it is clear that he plays the role of an old man for often his movements and gestures are so strong and dexterous and so graceful that for a minute you forget his gray head. Uh, second physics lives by movement, therefore simplicity, normativity, and beauty are as natural for it as breathing in water is natural for a fish. Uh, second physics knows a lot about love. Without guaranteeing anything in advance in each individual case, I can say with full responsibility that a hard worker is the best lover in the world. If we mean the purely physical meaning of this word, word, the characteristics typical of the second function as such, strength, variety, procession, dialogue, flexibility, can be entirely transferred to the sex of the second physics. In love, a worker is tireless, confident in himself and in his right to leadership in this area, multifaceted, unconventional, resourceful, <laughs> natural, tolerant, benevolent, responsive, values all stages of sexual intercourse without exception, from the very beginning to the very end. Damn, need me a 2F girl. <clears throat> the passion of the worker's nature and the abundance of erogenous zones, located, unlike the first physics, also on the back, okay, contribute a lot. But most of all, I don't know why, the worker's ears are erogenous. In the light of this feature, the habit of Napoleon, who possessed the second physics, of ruffling the ears of his subordinates as a sign of his highest favor, becomes clear. 
he caressed the way he wanted to be caressed. Aww. Among the many love virtues of the hard worker, it is necessary to include the fact that his sex is long-lived. Second physics is not inclined to delay the time of her first sexual contact, and happily indulges in this activity throughout her life, to the last point allowed by the aging of the body. Okay. Just taking a sip of tea here. Just trying to sip all this in right now. Um, let's see. The very attitude of second physics to sex can be called normative. In this area, the sports uh, fever of the first physics, the timidity and hypocrisy of the third physics, and the indifference of the fourth physics are equally alien to her in this area. The worker recognizes sex as a necessary, pleasant duty, which can be discussed without delight or curses in simple, calm, free language. The attitude of the worker towards nudity is just as calm. He is a born nudist, a person who accepts nudity as a non-negotiable given, appreciating it at least for the fact that it is natural, not seeing anything super tempting or super repulsive in nudity. Uh, in general, the distinctive feature of the second physics is Rabelaisian simplicity, uh, love and naturalness of attitude towards everything related to physiology. For her, there is no high and low in physiology. There is nothing worthy of concealment, nothing shameful. It's still wonderful, it's still beautiful, and can be a source of ins inspiration. Uh, in this regard, I will not deny myself the pleasure of setting a long, but absolutely charming quote from Zenobi Zinnick's novel, Russophobe and Fungophile, with, uh, which with rare relish describes the process of defecation of one Russian immigrant who came to England. This is, this is pretty hilarious. Uh, what illuminates this clearing with a flickering light, the Russian ass or the English moon? He relieved himself noisily and from the heart. He grunted, strained, and groaned blissfully, materializing the connection of his soul, a.k.a. the stomach, with the roots and soil through the anus, sitting with a plantain leaf in his hands at the ready. With each grunt, he felt more and more how the blissful emptiness inside him was balanced with the pristine emptiness of this night clearing. After this quote, uh, is it worth explaining where the author put physics? Uh, the worker's perception of physical existence primarily as a process leads to the fact that he is not only sexual, but also child-loving. Kind of wish he didn't put that in the same, <laughs> in the same sentence. Uh, although not thoughtlessly, but quite prudently. He loves children, loves to make them, bear them, feed them, sew them, wash them, fuck them, etc. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, wash them, etc. Uh, therefore, no matter how the other functions of the worker are related... No matter what relationships develop in the family, there is no reason to worry about the life and physical health of children born of the second physics. And that makes sense uh, because earlier he pointed out, um, way earlier, how uh, you know there's no better caretaker of the sick and elderly than a uh, second physics type. And it makes sense that you know children being physically vulnerable uh, would also you know need attentive caretakers. So okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, a worker is extremely um, is an extremely contact, uh, like a sensitive creature in the physical sense. Uh, he loves to touch, uh, stroke, care for people and objects that he considers his own, family and friends without changing his need for contact, even when he needs to take out pots, meaning um, like piss pots or uh, chamber pots, um, or squeeze out pus. Okay. And at the same time, for the second physics, there is a line beyond which there are people and objects that are completely untouchable for it, towards which it has, a, it has a priori a feeling of disgust that is so strong that it sometimes looks simply anecdotal. About Dostoevsky, who, strange as it may seem, had a second physics uh, position, um, his wife told the following story. One day they went into a Berlin restaurant, sat down under a tree, and ordered beer. Suddenly, a twig fell from a tree into Dostoevsky's mug, and, and with it, a huge black beetle. My husband was squeamish and didn't want to drink from the mug with the beetle, but gave it to the waiter, ordering him to bring another. When he left, my husband regretted why the thought had not come, uh, had not come to him to demand a new mug first. 
and now perhaps the waiter will just take out the beetle and the branch and bring back the same and bring the same mug back. When the waiter arrived, um, Fyodor Mikhailovich asked him, "Well," and then the translation cuts off, unfortunately. This episode with Dostoevsky, in addition to vivid illustration of the thesis about the emphasized cleanliness of the second physics, is a clear example of the discrepancy in the psychological attitudes of different physicists. Unlike Dostoevsky, the waiter most likely had the first physics, and uh, she, due to her thick skin, is not very squeamish. Um, in this circumstance, determine the difference in the behavior of the waiter and his famous client. So there must have been some additional uh, part of the story where the waiter said something that was, you know, indicative of first physics and not being squeamish. Um, the hard worker's passion for cleanliness looks almost manic in the eyes of the other physicists, and it is the easiest way to recognize the second physicist. One has only to enter the house, sparkling with cleanliness and order in which he certainly lives. Which, as a 3F type, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, the worker is fast, agile, and restless. Uh, his energy and endurance are amazing. There is no worse punishment for second physics than forced idleness. The most severe operations and heart attacks are not able to shackle the worker. As soon as he comes to his senses, he begins to feel the need for action, a motor itch, which quickly leads to flight from the hospital bed. Second physics is the only true workaholic. Labor is necessary and dear to her in itself often regardless of the size of their reward. Moreover, special attention should be paid to the fact that her workaholism is not limited to just the physical sphere. No, second physics is a workaholic in general, of the widest profile. No matter in what order the other functions of the worker are, he is ready to work tire tirelessly in any place where his lot does not throw him. In the artistic, intellectual, managerial fields, it doesn't matter. A worker can work on an assembly line, although not without violence against his nature, which is burdened by monotony. It is much more effective to use second physics in a variety of collective work. Such qualities of the second function as strength, process, processivity, dialogue, flexibility, and the second physics in production are embodied in the type of ideal master. Uh, there is such a master and more than one in any production. He is greedy for work, dexterous, ready to set an example of work enthusiasm captivate the indecisive and force the careless to work, replace the tired, trade a newcomer, be the first to master a new operation, uh, take control when emergency situations arise. Unfortunately, there was a place on earth where the greed for the work of the second physics turned into a tragedy for it. These were Stalin's camps. This happened because confidence in the absolute value of work, the habit of action and fearlessness in wasting energy forced him to harness himself to hard labor without guile from the first to the last day with full dedication, the payment for which was quick and painful death. The worker, incapable of simulation and sabotage, simply burned out like a candle from hunger and overexertion in less than a year. Peace to his ashes, who died more absurdly and tragically than others, who died because of the inability to curb the best side of his nature. Uh, I'm going to take a sip. The special talent of the second physics is to make, as we say, candy out of shit. Second physics is economical. In its economy, nothing is wasted, and at the same time, um, nothing lies as a dead weight. Any even heavily worn thing eventually finds its use, often quite far from its original one. When turning shit into candy, the worker uses uh, some special type of thinking, the mechanism of which I don't undertake to explain, I only know that no one is able to comprehend the world of things so deeply and comprehensively and transform it as deeply and comprehensively as uh, second physics. Uh, Cocteau wrote about Picasso, he collected whatever he had to. He is a brilliant rag picker. As soon as he leaves his house, he begins to pick up everything and bring it to his workshop, where anything begins to serve him, elevated to a new high rank. And it's not just hands that pick up an unusual object, the eye also picks out every little detail. If you look closely at his canvases, the objects obey Picasso like animals obey Orpheus. He leads them wherever he wants, into the kingdom, which he reigns supreme, 
establishing his own laws, but these objects always remain recognizable because Picasso is always faithful, faithful to the idea contained in them. Very interesting. Without excessive excitement, but with complete seriousness, <sighs> second physics approaches the world of things. Uh, he is dear to her, an element as dear as air to a bird. Uh, Dostoevsky's wife recalled, For two or three days my husband and I went to buy out outerwear for me for the summer, and I marveled at uh, Fyodor Mikhailovich how he did not get bored with choosing, examining materials from the point of view of their quality, design and style of the item being purchased. Everything he chose for me was of good quality, simple and elegant, and I subsequently completely trusted his taste. Second physics knows the value of money, knows how, and loves to earn it. As in work in general, in his financial activities, the worker knows no bounds and is internally ready for endless accumulation. However, he is not a Shylock or gobsec to languish over gold. The mercantilism of second physics is not so much effective as it is processional. Therefore, its self-interest does not reach a pathological, tragic breakdown, but has the character of healthy enthusiasm albeit in a rather specific field of activity. Uh, the financial collapse, of course, is not painless for second physics. However, it is not fa fatal for her. It does not knock the hard worker out of the saddle. Collapse worsens the conditions of the acquisition process, but does not cancel the process itself, which means life goes on. Uh, from the point of view of sympathy for political economic models, the hard worker is best classified as a social democrat. Of all types of property, he prefers collective property, without excluding others, however. He takes property inequality for granted, but believes that all capable citizens should pay a tax that ensures a tolerable existence for the poor. Uh, at the same time, according to the hard worker, this tax should not be a feeding trough for the uh, idle people and should not be excessive, uh, depriving both the poor and the rich of the incentive to work. In short, both in the family and in society, his, he is a sober, prudent altruist, not forgetting either himself or others. Yep, I think that's that's a pretty fair, you know, analogy that you can draw between the, you know, uh, 2F blown up to the political and then 2F shrunk down to the familial level. Okay, I need more tea. Uh, Truzenic is the best fighter in the world. Um, I don't know what Truzenic is. Uh, the very bodily ar architecture of the second physics, with its short, dense legs, low center of gravity, wide square body, gives special power and stability to the figure of the worker. But the main thing, the fighting advantage of the second physics, lies not in anthropology, but in psychology. Uh, in its absolutely unfeigned fearlessness. Second physics get in, gets involved in battles without hesitation, without preliminary calculation of the consequences and fights to the last, sparing neither himself nor the enemy. Napoleon's famous phrase, we must get involved in battle and then we will see, ideally reflects the reckless behavior of the second physics in battle, and those traces of many wounds that were found in the emperor's body after his death testify. His pugnacity was realized not in absentia, only in office campaign plans, but was personal. Uh, speaking about the courage of the second physics, one cannot help but say that it is not always for the benefit of the worker, and in this case can be considered a virtue only conditionally. Uh, the fact is that the second physics is born fearless. There is no merit here, and the source of this fearlessness is in the psychological focus on the strength and flexibility of the physical principle. A hard worker can afford to be fearless because he feels his body as something like a rubber truncheon, an effective, reliable, indestructible weapon. Since we are talking about the pugnacity of the second physics, the question naturally arises about the criminogenicity of this category of citizens. What can I say? Of course, you cannot call a worker an angel, but without taking upon myself the courage to answer for each individual case, I can say with full responsibility that he is a law abide, that he is law abiding by nature, and not out of fear. Uh, he simply fears that his physical origin is broad enough and richly gifted to earn his livelihood by honest labor, without the risk of coming into conflict with the law. 
I guess, unlike the first, the first physics. Uh, violence for selfish motives is generally internally alien to huh, the toiler. Therefore, even when due to circumstances, he takes the path of violence, the social democrat in him does not die. The worker simply transforms into a Robin Hood, a social democrat with a criminal bias, and thus, as it were, reconciles with himself. I don't have crime statistics, but looking at second physics through the prism of psychosophy, you feel that of all types of criminal activity, the closest to it is theft using technical means. In such thefts, there is an element of youth, a spirit of competition, and scope for loving hands that understands the technique. Accordingly, in an environment of organized crime, a worker feels better in the role of a technical director, providing the material part of operations, cars, weapons, communications, locks, etc. That is pretty interesting, and I think that is that does ring true to me. Uh, while I was sitting and describing the features of chromogenesis of the second physics, a newspaper arrived, and it contained a fresh it contains a fresh criminal story, clearly demonstrating to what comical extent the Robin Hood of second physics sometimes reaches. Oh, excuse me, I'm gonna let you like so much again. Uh, I quote the note in full. An interesting incident occurred in Gastonia, uh, North Carolina. A thief broke into the apartment. To begin with, for some reason, he washed the dishes, the kitchen floor, the bathtub, and then disappeared, taking with him a stereo system and some small things. It's nice, of course, that the apartment has been put in order, says victim Stephanie Pitts, but where are the things? Uh, a hard worker criminal is always internally divided. Circumstances force him to do evil, while his soul longs for good deeds. Hence, such paradoxes as the combination of theft and washing the victim's dishes. About tastes. Probably many will not agree with me, but the taste of the hard worker is exemplary. To characterize it in one word, I think it is best to call the taste of the second physics Japanese. The Japanese have a predominant predominance of second physics. Uh, a distinctive feature of Japanese taste is the priority of naturalness over all other properties of an object, be it design or cooking. Everywhere the Japanese tries to avoid, tries to avoid violence against the material, attempts to pass uh, one thing off as another. On the contrary, the aesthetic credo of the Japanese requires that during processing, not to hide, but to emphasize and highlight the natural properties of the material. This credo is also manifested in Japanese cuisine, which in its principles is close to raw food, in architecture and ceramics, where traces of processing are specially preserved in the form, and of course in such a specific form of artless art as ikebana. Of course, only in Japan was the taste for second physics able to develop and become the norm. Any worker living in, an, in another country, one way or another, must adapt his taste to local time and national norms, but within the limits uh, within which aesthetics is always allowed to fluctuate, the second physics demonstrates the same inherent craving for naturalness, the naturalness of color, sound, smell, etc. And that's the end for second physics. I think that's that's a pretty good one, um, pretty good section. So.